know what the sentence is for multi-million dollar stock fraud. What are you doing? I'm doing it all. You guys have no idea how to run a company. What's happening, man? I created this entire market. Blackberry is directed by Matt Johnson. It stars Glenn Howerton as Jim Bazile, and it also stars Jay Burchill as Mike Lazaridis. Now, those two characters are important because this movie is about those two real-life people that put together the Blackberry cell phone, the world's first smartphone. That was a cool concept to me when I heard about this movie because I was like, I had a BlackBerry back in the day. So getting to see its inception, the creation of the BlackBerry cell phone, it's going to market, everybody wanting one, everybody needing one, but eventually meeting its demise by the tech that I'm currently filming this review on, the Apple iPhone. Of course, I'm using the 15, not the original, but it's just cool that this tech is still around and the BlackBerry is irrelevant now. It's just, it's a crazy world we live in. But I would have seen this movie so much earlier had they actually marketed this thing because BlackBerry is a movie that actually came out in 2023 and I had no idea, which is crazy for me because you guys know that I watched over a hundred films last year, did reviews for almost all of them or shorts. At the end of the year, I ended up doing a year long ranked list where I tier list ranked all the movies I saw. And this movie probably would have been in my top 10 and definitely would have made my top 20 had I known it even came out. But I had no idea this thing dropped but I finally got a chance to see it on Hulu on a plane yesterday and I had to stop and make a review about it because this movie is awesome. So again, this movie centers around the creation of the BlackBerry cell phone and the lives of the people that went into the creation of the cell phone. It's such an interesting story too because this, this movie kicks off, you have Mike Lazaridis and his best friend try to pitch this cell phone as sort of a work in project to a company and nobody gets it. The guy behind the desk that doesn't get it, doesn't have time for them, is played by Glenn Howerton, who I personally have I've only seen in a very few things. Like, of course, I've seen him in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, and I saw him in his one scene in The Strangers, but I don't know how much more he's done, but he shines in this movie. He just does a fantastic job. We'll get into his performance in a minute, but essentially those characters meet, and after a few circumstances, things happen, they end up becoming co-CEOs of this company that's going to create the BlackBerry cell phone, and then you see them push it to market. Again, you get to see all of the speed bumps that they ran into trying to get this phone to market, trying to get the world to embrace smartphone technology. And it's just, again, such a cool, concept. And that'll lead me to my positives and my negatives. The first positive I have for this is, of course, the incredible performance that we got from Glenn Howerton. He shines in this movie, and I wish more people had seen this because I think he could have gotten some Oscar recognition for this role. I really do, especially with the field we had this year. Yes, I do believe Cillian Murphy deserved the Oscar. Yes, Paul Giamatti was a great runner-up, but you could have replaced anyone else in that lineup of best actor with Glenn Howerton, and he would have deserved it, in my opinion. He, he did a fantastic job with his performance where he was getting so angry, but he was such a likable character. And I think that was what was such a fun thing about his character is while he was so angry and kind of a dick to just everybody in the movie, there was something so likable about him. You followed him through this movie and just enjoyed being with this character. There was no part of this character where you were like, I don't want to follow him anymore. He's kind of a scumbag. Like, I know he's a scumbag, but he's such a likable scumbag that you enjoyed watching his performance. Glenn Howerton knocked it out of the park. And while we're talking about performances, we have to talk about Jay Burchill as well, playing Mike Lazaridis, because I don't know either of the main characters' real-life personas, but it was just such a contrast and such a stark difference from how Glenn Howerton portrayed his character that it really worked. You had this character that was more reserved and shy, not able to talk in meetings and stumbling over his words, but he was incredibly smart when it came to the tech data side of things that you believed when he was putting together these cell phones that Jay Burchill was this character putting things together. Again, the performances in this movie were great. The surrounding cast in this movie was great as well, whether it was Mike Lazaridis' best friend or it was the other sort of nerdy tech people, or at one point they bring in a COO who comes in and just wrecks shop on their movie nights. He's like, we're not doing this anymore. This is a company to make money, not to have fun and party. And when that happens in the movie, you can really see a tide change. 
But again, it's all because of those incredible performances we got from the main actors and the supporting cast. My next positive has to be the soundtrack. I absolutely love the way they were able to blend music into this movie. Like I felt like the soundtrack was taking you on a ride. There were perfect moments where the soundtrack picked up where it sort of brought you along for the ride with them. And I, I think when a movie can do that, it does such a good job. I think the last movie I felt like that was the movie Air. The way the soundtrack carried you through that movie, that's what this movie reminded me of. It reminded me of just music that could bring you from scene to scene and you were locked in because of it. One one scene in particular that sticks out to me is the scene where all of the salesmen from the Blackberry company are going out to tennis clubs, fancy restaurants, and sort of modeling the Blackberry cell phone for these incredibly rich people and like laughing at different things they were texting or sending back and forth and getting everyone interested in buying the phone. And that's how Blackberry was able to sell so many phones to all these companies because these guys look so cool carrying them that all of a sudden Blackberry was now going out to all these really rich companies, and then these companies were buying them for their people. So it's just a cool way, a marketing strategy, but again, the way they use the music in that scene just really worked for me. My final positive for this movie has to be how funny I found moments of this movie, and the movie is no way a comedy, but it's such a serious tone biopic about the creation of the cell phone, about the creation of the smartphone going to market, these people's lives are on the line, the government's getting involved because of bad stock options that were created, and bad trades that were made and like dirty things that were done so the government starts to get involved so there's a lot of serious tones in this movie but they were able to infuse these funny moments throughout it to keep you invested and also just keep that levity so that the movie doesn't feel like it's just draining you you're like oh man I'm enjoying watching this but there's just there's it's so heartbreaking or it's so hard to get through because these characters keep hitting roadblocks but they're able to infuse these moments of I don't want to say comedy because sometimes it's just Glenn Howard and getting extremely angry and smashing a phone, but you laugh at those moments. And the way they were able to infuse those funny moments throughout this movie, when I say they worked for me, I mean they really worked for me. It was done so damn well. And that'll lead me to my only negative of this movie. And my only negative of this movie would be the pacing feels a bit off at times. Most of this movie worked for me, but there were these big time jumps, one in particular where one of the main characters has a full head of hair and he has a completely different look, clearly has gone through a bit of a lifestyle change, and they don't really get into that at all. They don't really explain what happened with him. They just show, hey, the cell phones are doing really well, and then time jump, now Mike Lazaridis kind of looks like an evil Bond villain. It was like, well, I would have liked to know what happened in there. I get it that they're trying to trim this down for the runtime of the movie, and the movie still works overall, but there's pacing issues like that where they'll do these time jumps and they don't really make it clear or if they do make it clear because they're giving you like 2007, 2008, whatever they're doing, they don't really explain how that character made that development from one place to the next. So I'd say that it's a pacing issue, but it's a pacing issue on development of characters, if that makes sense. Overall, I will say that Blackberry was a fantastic time. I wish this was a movie I had seen in theaters. If you're a fan of biopics, you will really enjoy this movie. If you're a fan of Glenn Howardin's performance in It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, where he plays the Golden God performance of Dennis, then you will definitely see a little bit of that in this movie, and I think you'll enjoy it for that. And unfortunately, this is a movie that isn't currently on physical media. This is a movie that is only available on streaming, and that bothers me because of Eventually, it will be behind a paywall that I don't have, and I won't have access to it. So one day, I hope we get a physical copy of BlackBerry. But until then, guys, check it out on Hulu. But those are just my opinions because that's my review for BlackBerry. Guys, if you have seen BlackBerry and you've got thoughts and you've got comments, throw those in the comment section down below. Sorry I'm late to the game on this one. Definitely one I wished I saw in 23, but it is what it is. With that said, if you like this video and you want to watch more, don't forget to hit the like button because it helps the video, it helps the channel, and it helps me right here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. All right, guys, we got to the end of my BlackBerry movie review. I hope you've had a chance to check out BlackBerry because it was a good time. Sorry about the hotel background here. I'm clearly not at my house. I'm on a road trip for work and I felt inspired. And when you feel inspired, you got to hit that record button. It's how YouTube works. That said, if you want to check out any of my other content, well, I've got all my 2023 movie reviews right there. And I've got all of my 2024 movie reviews right there.